Welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I am the founder and host, Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Lola. She is the host of This Black Girl Podcast, Lola at alola.miss.lola, is a former event manager and current UX designer in training with plenty of insight and background in psychology and relationships. The show is a reflective conversation and assessment of the many tropes and characteristics that attempt to define Black women and Black people in general. From relationships, history, pop culture, politics, and many things in between, it aims to dismantle the monolith one episode at a time. And without further ado, please welcome Lola. We're going to talk about self-reflection and self-esteem today. That's right. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being with you. My pleasure, Lola. But before we dive into our segment, I definitely want you to share a fun and interesting fact about yourself as a way of an icebreaker. Okay, fun icebreaker. I have two. One, as a child, I had a mild allergy, um, allergy to water. So I had to bathe in like mineral water <laughs> growing up when I was a child. Um, second fun fact, I've been struck by lightning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So bathing in mineral water, was that yeah. super expensive for your parents to have to bathe? <sighs> like, I hope it wasn't. I know it's expensive now. Um, hopefully it wasn't too, too bad. I know my mom, she used to cheat it by putting mineral oils into the bath. So that I wouldn't get like, um, almost like, I guess, an eczema type of reaction to it. And then I thankfully grew out of it. So (laughs) that's good. That's good that you grew out of it. And then the other one struck by lightning. Yes. So again, it was also another childhood experience. I was at with a babysitter and it was a stormy day. She took us out to the back porch to look at the storm, look at the rain. And me as a naive, not listening child (laughs) left off the porch to look at it closer. And I didn't really see much of anything. I just saw like a giant flash. And then I saw her screaming, freaking out and just be like, okay, everybody go in, everybody go in. And I was just like, what happened? (laughs) And then it turned out, she told my mother afterwards what had happened. I guess apparently I was wearing like rubber soled shoes. So it wasn't, I wasn't affected. Mm-hmm. but that's literally the only memory I have of it. I didn't really thankfully experience any detrimental symptoms of it, but it's a fun thing to share. <laughs> oh, wow. And I'm glad you had on rubber boots because I, I can't even imagine or fathom just have, hearing someone say, oh, I'm struck by lightning. And you just said it's so nonchalant. Like, yeah, my other fact is, <laughs> well, because, <laughs> Well, because, um, like, thankfully, nothing really happened to me. I wasn't really affected by it. So that's the only type of reaction I can have to it is, oh, this happened, you know, so. (laughs) Interesting. And you'll definitely have someone um, else be out in a um, interesting share because who else can say, oh, yeah, I've been struck by lightning. Very few. (laughs) So let's dive into why you are so passionate about not only self-esteem, but self-reflection. And when you think about these two components, did they help lead you to create your podcast? Um, I would have to say yes, for sure. Just because I feel like a lot of times in general, because I can't speak for every Black person, I can only speak for myself first and foremost, you kind of go with the motions, you do what you've either known or have been taught to do in terms of like going to school, um, getting married, having children, you're supposed to follow that kind of norm. And when I found that sometimes those things didn't always either play out the way it's supposed to play out, or I wasn't emotionally um, happy or satisfied with those, I guess, those expectations, I thought, something was wrong with me like you know and when you think something's wrong with you when you don't fit into certain boxes or into certain norms that definitely 
does put a damper and it definitely reduces someone's self-esteem or and especially somebody's self-worth um especially in a world where you know black women are usually punched down are usually looked at as the lesser category or the less than capable and i'm really thankful especially now that that script has really been flipped and that you know people are embracing black people more to the point that they're replicating us physically surgically everything in between um but with that being said it's important to look at certain moments in your life where you did embrace who you are your blackness your whether with family friends whatever and just like look into those moments to not only lift yourself up but use it to further express yourself and so with this show um it initially started with one of my best friends who um, was a co-host with me we actually used to have a radio station our a radio show and we definitely love being able to talk about those certain moments pick them apart why that worked why that didn't work what helped to succeed what helped us fail and i wanted to continue that conversation even when she couldn't because i think it's important for other people to hear that not only are they not alone but even if they're a little different they're still worthy and they still should see themselves as worthy and important i love that and um with your best friend that was co-hosting with y'all with you are you still friends today even though she's not a co-host anymore oh absolutely we, okay we don't we don't let the business ruin what we have that's way more important that's way deeper than you know sitting at a table with a microphone so um we're still very close i totally respected that she was at a point where she couldn't um continue certain things and so i just you know, chose to pick up where she left off rather than just drop the show and just keep it going because thankfully a lot of people enjoy what we have to share every week. Amazing. And then I like the fact that you did put a disclaimer like I am not the spokesperson for all Black people because yeah. sometimes when you're the only, like I like to say chocolate drop, then, <laughs> and you're that. the only... <laughs> you're the only one in the room people look to you to be that spokesperson like for example not to talk about movements here or anything but whenever the whole george floyd incident happened i was working in corporate america at the time in oil oh. and gas so this is going to paint you a picture um oil and gas i live in texas texas is a very red state very conservative you don't yeah. find a lot of um melanated people or chocolate drops in oil and gas so whenever it happens like so how do you feel about it? And, and they're just asking me all these community questions as if like I am the chocolate drop that speaks for all. And right. I was like, I, I can say how I feel, but I can't say how the rest of my racial group feels about it because everyone has a different tie to the situation based on relationships that they've had in their life and how that has skewed their views. And I think for you talking about this Black Girl podcast, it is giving you a chance to hear other perspectives from other women who look like you or maybe young girls, depending on what your age demographics are. And you're really talking about topics that matter, but you're also educating the rest of the community at large or maybe some of those allies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I refute <laughs> that that chocolate drop roll the the token in the room because i've definitely been there and i've been that token and i've been that person where i felt at moments out of touch so it's like i would hate to speak for a group of people when i'm not even in touch with what's happening and then there's moments where i'm totally in touch with something going on and i'm speaking to other people that have no clue what's going on so i i, I love the fact that with um, my current platform, I can share those thought processes, not only with other black women, but like other people who, you know, black, white, Asian, Indian, whatever their background is, the fact that like men, like even we had a whole season where we interviewed just men, <laughs> just to have like their perspective on things. Cause you know, women like to think they know everything inside and out and oh, men are this and men are that. So it was great to talk to all different types of men of different backgrounds, black, white, Latino, um, gay, straight, bisexual, like we talked to, well, I can't say everyone, but at least a wide scope to really have like 
an understanding of what how other people may think and other people may feel and to hopefully build a stronger bond of empathy with your other people but also most more importantly for them to build empathy with us Absolutely, because what what I just heard you say is that you are breaking down those barriers, you're canceling those limiting beliefs, and you're stretching people beyond their current thinking. So getting them to really shift their mindset and overall paradigm shift by just engaging in a um, candid conversation. And that is a part of self-reflection, because until we're really ready to engage in those difficult, or sometimes I say courageous conversation, then how can we really complement self-esteem? Because there's obviously something inside of us that is not meshing well for us to really have that full confidence in who we are and where we want to go in order for our self-esteem to just really be exuberant. So I want you to think about a time, whether it's childhood, um, adolescence or adulthood, whenever you personally struggled with self-esteem and what did you do to overcome that? Um, I guess one of the most significant parts where I struggled with self-esteem was definitely um, one of my previous relationships. I was married and it was towards the end of that relationship where we separated and inevitably divorced. Um, I unfortunately had a partner who was very, um, I don't want to say emotionally abusive, but the reality is that's probably what that was. But they were definitely making me question my self-esteem with gaslighting, um, negative comments, you know, the the typical, oh, well, who are you going to find? Um, you're going to, do you really want to be a single mother? you know, those types of questions that make you almost question yourself to think, well, am I putting enough effort in this relationship? Am I trying hard enough? And I had to literally like just sit down, cry it out, talk to myself and be like, is this really what I want? Is this what I want my child to grow up and see as a healthy relationship? And then once I was asking myself those questions that kind of just woke me up and it was like, I can't do this. Like it sucks. Nobody likes to see a breakdown of a relationship, but like, this doesn't work. And thankfully I was able to step away and move away from that relationship as hard as it was. But ironically enough, now that we're not together, we get along even better, which is because I guess there's that, there's less pressure of that expectation, I guess, in a relationship now. So we get along better. We co-parent wonderfully and I, I'm, I'm just thankful because that's not always the case. Mm-hmm. And thank yeah. you for sharing that because sometimes it's hard to talk about those relationships or those situations in your life that had you broken for a moment, but it also woke you up to really see who you are, the value in yourself, and that it was time for you to, to step away. And there are some women who aren't able to do that until years have gone by. So you find them talking about, oh, I went through narcissistic abuse. I was emotionally drained. It was very taxing and et cetera. Then they're carrying around these emotional scars, these wounds and these baggages, metaphorically speaking. And then whenever you um, come in contact with them, it's like they're jabbing at you because of their self-esteem is low. So they're deflected onto you instead of reflecting internally and seeing that you're an asset versus a liability. You were created for a purpose. You're a masterpiece. And I think we as women need to start uplifting other women instead of trying to be in competition and beat one another down. So absolutely. No, I I totally agree. I was just going to add to that, that Usually yeah. it's a, it's a cycle breaking that sometimes they need to do with self-healing that a lot of black women don't always get to do. It's more just kind of brush yourself off, move on, or, you know, pull up your bootstraps and keep going rather than to take that time and that moment to understand what you went through, um, to like heal from it and to finally step with more purpose and with self-worth 
so that if they do decide, okay, I want to pursue another relationship or I want to do something else that will require you to have a certain confidence in who you are and what you deserve, um, they have that strength from doing that. And a lot of women don't get the chance to do that. So they keep accidentally pursuing the same toxic or problematic relationships they had before. So let's focus on this a little bit more because it is part of the segment with self-reflection as a whole, as well as self-esteem. Do you feel that Black women, it is the way that we are nurtured in our community, whether we're from a dual parent household or a single parent, but it's part of the culture because some of us don't like to go to therapy because you don't want an outside person in your business. Whereas Um, other people outside of the African-American black or chocolate drop community do seek out therapists and you find them getting over a lot of these hurdles quick, uh, quicker than others. Um, yeah, I told, I, I definitely support therapy. Um, you know, whether it's personal, whether it's family, couple counseling, just because I think it's very important sometimes to have a neutral third party assess a situation. Because a lot of times, especially who's a professional, that's the one thing I have to say, who's a professional, because there are a lot of Reddit, Reddit is real, okay, there's a lot of Reddit therapists online, but um, it's important, it's, it can be important to have a neutral third party assess the situation, because you may not be able to identify certain problematic behavior, um, you know, love bombing, uh, gaslighting, manipulation, things like that, that we're not necessarily taught to seek out. I feel like a lot of Black women, especially growing up, are just taught, don't be on the streets, don't be fast, don't be this. A lot of don't, 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 don't. A lot of, you know, things not to do rather than being taught what, well, okay, well, what should we be doing? Why, why is it wrong to be fast? What, it's more of we're taught to be defensive rather than to be proactive. You know, a lot of people like to say now, women are taught what not to do rather than to teach men not to do the action. You know, like a lot of times, um, rather than teaching men, stop looking at that young 14 year old girl, you're teaching the girl, don't dress like that or else grown men are gonna look at you. Why should you have to teach the child rather than, you know, handle the grown adult? They're the grown adult, they should know how to behave, so. Absolutely. It's those double standards. Yeah. Sorry. No, absolutely. It's definitely those double standards. And I feel like having that neutral third party to kind of ask those questions and unlock those, those thought processes are super important. Um, Just because we're just, I, I feel like sometimes black people, especially with our culture are very tunnel focused that you see certain things and that's how that person is. Well, that's just family. Well, there's a lot of excuses rather than making sure that there's accountability. And, you know, people like to claim, and I don't want to call people say that people are crime victims, but there are actual victims, but sometimes people will use that term of victimization or or say that, oh, I'm always blamed for this rather than you're not being blamed. Maybe like look at the other person's perspective and therapy definitely teaches you that, which is super important that like is not necessarily that I've seen at least in the African-American community. So with you and I both being um, podcasters and just bringing powerful content to the forefront, I think that we could do our part by having, you know, different um, professionals on, maybe um, ones that look like us. So like having a Black therapist on, having a Black psychologist or a psychiatric person, because mental health is another thing that people don't talk about that can weigh in on your self-esteem and it also close down that self-reflection part of you. And I've been looking for different people within the within the Black community, as well as allies outside of the Black community, to really have these conversations, to share what they see and witness from a professional standpoint without giving too much proprietary information. So have you sought out any um, paid professionals in this area? Well, um, I haven't sought out any professionals in, in necessarily to bring it to the podcast platform. Um, I do have my own personal therapist that I talk to and I discuss certain topics with, and she's great. She's very insightful. Also another black woman, Um, you know, 
but my previous episode that I just released last week, um, I spoke to Shanika Brown. She has a master's of education and she's currently studying for her PhD. Um, she is a black educator based in Miami, Florida. And she is also a children's author. And so what she does, and I, I love it so much. I was just telling her she um, writes children's books specifically for black children with the purpose of not only teaching about black history and black education, but to also have um, just to have black children demonstrated in books. Cause she was saying like when she was looking for educational tools for students at the time that she was teaching, there was nothing that looked like them. And I feel like having that foundation started at such a young age will help us further. You know, I feel like a lot of times we're stuck in a bubble because we're not seeing um, ourselves as black people reflected in other portions of society, politics, um, you know, positions of power right now, Ketanji um, Jack, Brown Jackson, like she, she's going through it so unnecessarily and it makes me sick, you know, um, but to have, you know, women like her that are seen and that are prominent and that are visible are super, super important, but I definitely recommend her because she also has a book writing um, workshop and business that helps empower other people, especially people of color, black people like ourselves, to not only be able to share our voice, but to be able to publish it and to share it with others. I love that and kudos to her. So yeah, feel free to do an e-introduction between um, her and I, because I would love to have her on the platform and interview her. But I like um, that she is doing representation of what we look like because sometimes children, if they don't see somebody else that looks like them, then they don't feel like they can do that because they're like, I've never seen anyone that looks like me do it or whatnot. And um, I like the fact that you mentioned your personal journey with your own therapist. And I think that's so important because that is helping you get ahead um, by whether you talk about self-esteem or self-reflection or you talk about, you know, mindset or whatever the case may be, it's something that you're doing for your personal journey and growth and overall personal development. And it's okay to go seek a therapist. And I think we need to really um, tell more people about this. Like whenever I hired a coach, I wanted to level up in my business because I do have coaching clients. I'm a visionary coach. And I said, every coach has a great coach. So if I'm not being coached by someone else who's been where I am, but has superseded, then am I a fraud? Because I'm here coaching clients and telling them stuff that I may not necessarily walk through. Yes, I have 15 years in corporate America. 12 of them were in oil and gas. Yes, I looked young or yeah. whatnot. But that does not mean that I'm incompetent or incapable of, co of coaching or giving you guidance. It just means that I see myself as an investment and I'm going to do what I need to do in order to make sure that I remain steadfast and grounded and level up. Absolutely. Like the one, the one call to action I would have to say is that you don't have to have something wrong with you to want to pursue and have therapy. I just love even having sometimes a sounding board to just share my thoughts and have somebody with knowledge and reasoning kind of help me break that down and unpack. Even if it's just to ask a question like, somebody said this and it got me really upset, why? And like, if I may not have the answer, but she might be able to say, well, look at a b and c what like i notice a pattern here that you may not notice and like can just help you under not only understand yourself but understand your emotions and how you feel you don't have to necessarily have super deep-seated trauma to have to want to unpack it all with a therapist it's important to have just healthy unbiased conversations with somebody whose only interest to gain is like your mental health being, you know, being on the more positive end. Absolutely. And I love that you added that addition there, Lola, because you don't have to go if, um, if nothing is like 
major wrong. You're just going just to have another voice, like you said, a sounding board. And that's so yeah. important because sometimes you can't just go to your family members and friends because obviously their vision may be skewed because they see you in a different light. And, Absolutely. you know, whenever you're finding a therapist or a coach or whatnot, find someone that you mesh well with, because sometimes people end up with a person who doesn't really mesh well with them. And then they shut off the whole therapy or coaching thing when in actuality, it was just that individual and that individual wasn't your person. And that's okay. Just like Lola, you may not be everyone's cup of tea. And Je- me, Genesis, I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm somebody's cup of tea to somebody. I am exactly. somebody. Exactly. And, <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. And that's okay. That's the important part. Like, I personally went through the um, the resource of green space just because you can be specific and say, I want a female Black therapist that's okay with A, B, and C certain issues. And they help you refine And they don't make you feel bad to say that if you don't want this person, you could find somebody else. Because like you pointed out, not everybody is somebody's cup of tea. Like, you know. And then as we begin to wind down, because I definitely want to be respectful of your time, Lola, I want you to share some tips that um, our listeners and viewers can walk away with whenever they think about self-esteem and self-reflection and pairing the pairing them together to just really help them advance personally and professionally because you need it both um I would say if you don't if you feel weird or odd about talking to yourself and having those conversations within yourself have a journal there's nothing wrong with that whether it's handwritten whether it's online whatever your medium for it to work, even if it's voice notes that you can look back at and be like, whoa, what was I thinking? Or where's the growth or things like that to kind of pick apart your mindset and have that self-assessment. I think that's a great tool. And for self-esteem, the only thing I'm going to say, I'm going to quote RuPaul, love yourself because if you don't love yourself, who's going to love you? That's it. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So thank you for giving those tips. And I want you to share your call to action that you want them to do for this segment. Then plug in your website and where you hang out on social media. Of course. Um, My call to action is, you know, love, continue to love yourself. Even if you feel like some people who are closest to you don't love you, your validation needs to come from within and not externally. That is super important. Um, And if you enjoy our conversation and what we had right now and you want to hear more, I'm available on Instagram at this black girl podcast, all one word. Um, Me personally, my Instagram handle is ola.miss.lola without the H. Um, I drop weekly episodes and I like to feature wonderful black women such as yourself and others that I get to talk to as well as, you know, men um, you know, different races, things like that, and different topics. Um, and then I guess my website to access all of my podcasts, I'm available on all streaming platforms, such as Google podcasts, Apple podcasts, Spotify, Anchor FM, everything in between. Our main page though is anchor.fm slash this black girl. Ooh, I love it, Lola. And as my girl, Tiffany Hatch says, this is a shameless plug. I would love to interview her on my show. She ready. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) So thank you so much, Lola, for coming on today and just really having a coffee chat talk with me on self-esteem and self-reflection. For those of you listening, make sure you subscribe and share. We are on 40 plus platforms. Also leave me a review. What do you like? What don't you like? What topics are you interested in hearing? why feedback is a gift. For those of you interested in continuing the mission of GEMS podcast, which is to educate, inspire, and motivate while bridging the dot and connecting the, connecting the dots. So bridging the gap and connecting the dots with diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Why? Because it takes all of us to make this world a better place. We are looking for you. So you can contribute a monetary donation or a monthly subscription by going to genesisamarskemp.net, where we are ranked in the top 3% globally. Yes, 3% globally per www.listennotes.com. So until next time, peace love, and lots of blessing. Remember, you got this. You're an asset. 
not a liability. The world needs you. So get ready to pop because there's only one you, boo.